Tom here from Lawrence Systems and TrueNAS Core U4 was released on March 2nd of 2023. I loaded it on March 4th of 2023 and today is March 6th and all is well, nothing exploded. So if you're wondering, yes, it's fine to update. I also want to remind people that boot environments are still a thing on both TrueNAS Core and TrueNAS Scale. So if you ever have an update that just, well, doesn't work, you go back and reboot and choose the previous boot environment. That's pretty simple. Now, this release is just a minor update, very stable. So it wasn't expecting much other than a lot of bug fixes. And of course, there's a lot of bug fixes linked in the description below. I want to also address, though, the question that comes up every time of, is this the end of the road? Will this be the last update for TrueNAS Core or is it a dead project? This is just a repeated question and I can assure you it is not, but it is a very focused project. Now I did a video recently comparing TrueNAS Core and TrueNAS Scale and you can see they're pretty on par for performance. There's some nuances, but nonetheless, that video is linked down below. If you are still thinking about which NAS to get, let me explain to you from my enterprise consulting and also my engagement with the home lab and home user community, what my thoughts are on this. And that's really simple. If you are looking for a home user NAS that can not only be a NAS, but run lots of applications and everything else, you're going to go to true NAS scale. If you're looking for just a NAS, I want it to store files. I want it to be reliable and I'm fine with the hardware support offered through FreeBSD. TrueNAS Core is still a good go-to. Once you get to the enterprise market, pretty much what you're looking for is predictability and stability. Just, I want a predictable path. I don't need a lot of changes. I want absolute rock solid stability and TrueNAS Core because it's not as actively developed where you're trying to bolt on more features outside of NAS means every update is usually just a little bit less exciting. But less exciting is very good for the enterprise market that are running petabytes of storage or using this as part of their SAN, part of it with a, let's say, M50, because we are a reseller of IX Systems hardware where you get the high availability and the solid nature of that. This is where you just really don't want to rock the boat because it's running usually as a target for their virtualization storage, whether it's ESXi, XCPNG, or something else. And companies just want predictable that if there's an update, it may fix some little bug they have with the UI, which actually a lot of these bug fixes are small little UI elements and, you know, minor nuances, but that's fine because what we really want is to not have our whole servers go down or worry about any stability problem. They're not worried about extra applications. They're not worried about adding some extra functionality to it. So TrueNAS Core is still the go-to for a lot of enterprise environments. It's extremely stable and predictable. TrueNAS scale for the home users, hey, it's great. If you are just really wanting to throw those applications on there and look for the latest applications uh, that may be available through Docker and all the tinkering that comes with it, I've got videos where I've talked about this, that is also a good solution, but it's just not something you see as much in the enterprise world because the enterprise world separates each one of the servers to its own task, your application tasks over here and the storage device over here. So that's kind of the status update of TrueNAS Core. And as far as our current use case for our TrueNAS core system, which is, of course, right on this latest version here, it's just that for us. It's pretty much a virtualization target. If we go over here to the storage and we look at the pool usage, yeah, we have our LTS office things where we have a little bit of storage for other things, such as the Docker storage container, which is probably be coming in a future video talking about how you may want to set up your Docker storage for your application storage versus how you may attach things. And that's separate because there's no Docker running on this. This is TrueNAS core, but we have all our tools folders. We have our Zen folders here, which are related to the iSCSI folders, the Zen ISO storage, offsite backups, production backups. Now, as far as interoperability, yes, you can have mixed environments. That's still working perfectly fine. That's probably the reason when I load these, I wait a couple days to make sure I had no issues replicating because each of these, this S3 Synology Hyper Backup, because yes, we do synchronize our Synologies to this, once again, just as a backup target as an S3 emulation using MinIO. And then we make a copy of it. And each one of these other machines that it's making a copy to, some of them on-site, some of them off-site, some of them going over VPNs, such as the uh, off-site production backup. This one goes over VPN and lands off-site. This is all working perfectly fine. So the interoperability is still kept both ways between TrueNAS Core and TrueNAS Scale. So for anyone wondering, or if you have a mixed environment like I do, hey, it's still working great. 
So in conclusion, I plan to keep running TrueNAS Core on at least a few machines and will continue supporting it and selling it to businesses that have that really focused need. As far as like IO Cage goes though, I'm not really pushing people who want to use IO Cage apps. They're there, they exist. IO Cage is a good system. It's just not as popular as the Docker containers and all the application support you're going to get with TrueNAS Scale. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think of the project. Let me know which one you went with down in the comments below. And as long as these are interoperable, they can live in the environments as I do, switching back and forth in terms of doing replication between the two different systems. So yeah, it's easy to maintain these two systems in the same environment. So you don't have to choose one. But if you only have one NAS, which one would you go with? Let me know your thoughts down below and thanks.